On the April 2nd edition of Newswatch 18, Cyride riders on the Blue Route may have had an interesting trip to campus this morning. Stay tuned to find out the reason behind the detour. The College of Business received exciting news today that has them nationally recognized. Cyclone Spring Sports had a busy week and I'll have all the dev updates coming up. The weather is almost summer like today and this weekend, but how long will it stick around? Find out more tonight on Newswatch 18. This is Newswatch 18. Watch 18 starts now. Good evening and welcome to the April 2nd edition of Newswatch 18. I'm Chrissy Amaya. And I'm Kate Hurley. Sci riders who use the Blue Route may have been a little surprised and slightly nervous today when the bus took a different road to campus. A water main break closed parts of South Duff Street down for 24 hours, causing the detour. The problem is expected to be fixed today, so the number blue route can return to its normal route tomorrow. Business students at Iowa State don't need to worry about the job search after graduation. U.S. News ranked Iowa State as one of the leading business schools to have students land jobs within three months after graduation in 2011. Iowa State ranked third among 135 schools who submitted their data to U.S. News. Among these schools, the average employment rate for students three months after graduation was 78.7%. Iowa State's average was 96.7%, beating out other top 10 schools, Dartmouth College and Northwestern University. Wednesday, the campus programs and broader impacts resource fair will take place in the Howe Hall Atrium. Strengthening the professorate and the Center for Excellence in Science, Mathematics, and Engineering Education are hosting the event. The fair focuses on discussing possible alliances between businesses and programs outside of ISU with ones affiliated with campus. This crea creates opportunities for Iowa State to branch out of campus and provide businesses a credible Iowa State affiliation. The fair is free and starts at 3 in the afternoon and ends at 5. The fair is followed by a lecture about STEM education by Associate Dean of Texas A&M University, Dr. Timothy Scott, from 5 to 6. A select few Iowa State undergraduates get a chance to share their research this Wednesday at the State Capitol. The annual event, Research in the Capitol, has students from ISU, UNI, and Iowa showcasing research they have conducted themselves. The event reinforces examples of the positive results from an undergraduate education. 24 students from Iowa State will present their poster boards to lawmakers, reporters, and top university administrators. The research topics range from possible anti-cancer agents to Latino families in Iowa. Hilton Coliseum in the Sheeman Building hosted over 600 young scientists and engineers ranging from 6th to 12th grade on Friday. This marked the 55th anniversary of the State Science and Technology Fair of Iowa. Students showed off their hard work by presenting their final projects. Some winners received scholarships while the overall winner won a trip to the Intel International Science and Engineering Technology Fair in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So Aaron, what's going on in Cyclone Sports? Big weekend on the diamond as well as the links for the Iowa State Cyclones and I'll also update the NCAA National Championship game which will get started here in about 10 minutes. Stay tuned, you're watching Newswatch 18. Today is a special day. Today we gather as a nation and as an international community to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. She's been recognized by religious figures and politicians around the world. To us, she's just Rachel. But to the rest of the world, she's the woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not to drive home buzzed. Here today to honor Rachel is the family whose lives she spared. Mm, I like the green, crunchy ones myself. Whoa. 
Get out and explore nature. There's surprises everywhere. Go to discovertheforest.org. <gasps> Anyone up for dessert? Nice. Oops. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Aaron Bauer with your Cyclone Sports Update. Though the Cyclones volleyball team is a few months away from opening the 2012 season, they picked up some early more momentum taking down Illinois in four sets. These spring matches have been a great way for Coach Christy Johnson Lynch to evaluate the talent she has returning to her team this year. And an early bright spot has been sophomore Victoria Hurt. She tallied 16 kills to lead Iowa State in the win over Illinois. And redshirt sophomore Rachel Hockaday added 13, while libero Kristen Hahn added team-high 25 digs. Iowa State takes a week off before traveling to Centerville to battle Missouri on April 12th. The Iowa State men's golf team was also in action this week, and the Cyclones were looking for another strong performance as they competed down at the LSU Invitational. The Cyclones shot well once again, coming home fourth with a three-round total of 882. Freshman Scott Fernandez once again led the Cyclones with a sixth-place finish. LSU won the tournament with a total of 853, barely edging Iowa, who returned to the clubhouse with an 855. The Cyclones hit the links once again down in Missouri on April 9th through the 10th. And the Cyclones softball team was unable to improve its Big 12 record as they fell to Texas Tech 5 to 3 in extra winning extra innings, excuse me, yesterday afternoon. Cyclone Jordan Smith played well as she belted her first career home run and Erica Miller extended her hitting streak to four straight games as she hit 44% in the series. Cyclones are back in action Wednesday night as they travel to Omaha to do battle with Creighton. First pitch is scheduled for 5 p.m. And finally, just a few short weeks ago, the NCAA tournament was getting underway and 68 teams were dreaming of hitting the hardwood tonight. For two of those teams, that dream's coming true. Number one overall seed, Kentucky, will face Kansas for the 2012 NCAA championship. The two teams met earlier this season. Kentucky won by 10 in a game played at Madison Square Garden, New York. Kansas turned its season around thanks to Thomas Robinson and Jeff Withy, who are both averaging nearly a double-double in tournament play. Tip-off for tonight's game is scheduled for 8.23 Central Time. And that's all we got for sports. Now, Corey, is this great weather going to continue? Blah. You know, absolutely beautiful weather here today in Central Iowa, but I'll talk about some changes coming up next on Newswatch 18. Americans is struggling with hunger. Who's the one in eight in your life? You can help today. Visit feedingamerica.org slash one in eight to find your local food bank. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome to Fogel's. Beautiful, isn't it? You expect options everywhere else. Why not with your medical treatment? Talk with your doctor to explore all your options and find what's right for you. Visit AHRQ.gov. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. 
Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Corey Huggins with a look at your forecast. An absolutely beautiful day here in central Iowa, but we're tracking a few changes. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But 84 degrees was the official temperature at the airport today, almost 30 degrees above our average, but not quite enough to change that record there. 85 is the record. Unfortunately, didn't quite make that. Currently here in Ames, mostly sunny skies. Temperature of 75 degrees, but we do have some rain on the way for tonight. Some of those could be strong and possibly even severe, so we'll keep an eye on that. And your winds are out of the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Current temperatures across the state, 81 for Storm Lake right now, 81 in Clorinda, 80 in Pella, 75 in Waterloo, and the Quad Cities checking in at 71. For tonight, mostly clear with a few rumblers out there as we move through the evening hours. Winds out of the southwest, 6 to 8 miles per hour, and your low right around 56. So what can we expect for tomorrow? Let's break it down a little bit. Midnight, mostly clear skies, a few showers and thunderstorms out there possibly, 63 degrees and winds out of the southwest at 7 to 9. Getting up and heading off to class around 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, 57 degrees under cloudy skies, and those winds switch to the northwest at 10 to 15. And then as classes start wrapping up for many people about 3 o'clock, 62 degrees and those winds continue to shift, this time out of the north at 15 miles per hour and gusts right around 20. So for tomorrow, windy with mostly cloudy skies, winds out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and 62 degrees for your high. So taking a look at your extended five-day forecast, these numbers are correct. They did render properly. It's going to feel downright chilly compared to what we've been used to over the past month or so. Wednesday and Thursday, a chance of some showers. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies, your highs in the low 60s. Take a look at Friday, the sun comes back out, but we don't warm up a whole lot, a high of 63. And then to start off your Easter weekend on Saturday, looking for 64 degrees and another chance of rain. That's a look at weather. Let's send it back to the desk. The JetBlue pilot arrested after an apparent mid-air meltdown last week was ordered held without bond during a brief appearance before a federal judge in Amarillo, Texas, on this morning. Pilot Clayton Osborne's erratic behavior, seen in this passenger video, caused his co-pilot to lock him out of the cockpit. Osborne is recorded as saying the Las Vegas-bound flight was doomed and that the passengers would be taking a leap of faith. Recording devices on the plane are still being analyzed, according to federal officials. Planning your summer travel? You may want to hear this first. An annual ranking of the nation's airlines find things looking up for passengers, and three carriers holding on to their top spots. Karen Kaifa has today's Consumer Watch. A new report finds the overall performance of the nation's airlines flying a little higher. The Airline Quality Rating, a joint project of Wichita State and Purdue Universities, looks at four major elements of the passenger experience. An airline's on-time performance, its success in handling baggage, customer complaints, and travelers getting bumped from flights due to overbooking. In 2011, the nation's 15 largest airlines scored the best overall score in the report's 22-year history. Since 2007, when it was at its worst year ever since we were doing this, we have seen a, a consistent and steady increase or decrease, depending on how you want to look at the number, an improvement a steady improvement in the airline quality scores for the industry. So. Among individual carriers, the top three held their spots for a second consecutive year. AirTran came in at number one, Hawaiian Airlines at number two, and JetBlue at number three. Frontier Airlines and Alaska Airlines rounded out the top five. Delta was the highest ranked of the so-called legacy carriers at number six. The survey did not, however, look at what consumers pay for their tickets, a cost that's ticked upward thanks to decreased capacity and rising fuel costs. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kiva. And that's all we have for this edition of Newswatch 18. Thanks for joining us. Tune in tomorrow night at 8 for more news, weather, and sports. Have a great night.